Uh, so yeah, 2001 was the beginning. And I think um, what, uh, what it struck me from the beginning of La Corte and especially Paolo, um, and that's the reason why I think you know, in, a, in a way our company is unique, uh, is always the attention to not just the coffee machine and the product we make, but also to the coffee. In the end, coffee and you know, the coffee machines are complementary products. So our ultimate goal was and still is to make better coffee machine uh, in terms of material, in terms of technology inside to have a better cup of espresso. And I don't know if some of you have has listened to Paolo de la Corte speaking uh, on Instagram on his latest interview last week. And you know, there is a constant thinking and there is a constant attention to coffee to the pot to the raw material and you know because he knows the raw material very very well and then of course you can manage it very well by making uh, better coffee machines so the la corta became very known in the world in the industry you know back in the days because we came out with uh, we came out with our multi-boiler technology it was uh, our own way very unique way of uh, multi-boiler because you have this boiler and the glue pad, you know, attached, clenched together. And um, back in the days, already the connoisseurs, the coffee lovers were researching a lot about coffee. And the coffee machine companies had to give an answer to a better knowledge of the coffee itself. And I think multi-boiler at that time was very smart because uh, he gave an unprecedented control and thermal stability to the coffee machine. So very precise uh, extra extraction in terms of temperature. Then I think after maybe seven, eight years, a lot of companies, manufacturing companies, created their own multi-boiler system. So now it's, it's a fact that's out there in the coffee machine market. But uh, we wanted to, you know, create something different and focusing on um, something very, very important. And that was the reason why in 2015, so was uh, two host, uh, three hosts ago. In 2015, we launched MENA uh, with a DFR, which stands for Digital Flow Regulator. And uh, this is a patented technology and it allows you to control the flow of the water very well, uh, very carefully inside the coffee machine. Um, we all know, I mean, uh, again, we are, a lot of people know a lot of coffee, I can see this, chat, so uh, I'm not going to go too much in depth, but we all know how important the pre-infusion stage is. So the pre-infusion at the end is how you prepare the coffee to be extracted and how you wet the coffee cake to put it under pressure. And the better you do that, the better results you're going to get. Because once the coffee is extracted, you know, the game is over. You know, what it has done, what has been done, has been done, you know, and it could be good, it could be undrinkable, but, you know, all the preparation of coffee, like the magic that happens inside a coffee machine is, uh, is, is great. And that was the reason why we decided to focus on the flow. Um, and we launched this digital flow regulator inside of our mean. To be completely honest with you, we, it was uh, a bit difficult at the beginning to explain uh, the flow and how it impacted the, the coffee, uh, but then it became easier and easier. We also implemented this technology inside our XT model. Also we will have a new model called Zero coming out in September. We presented at the last Milan show last October. Uh, and I think there is no better person, you know, than Danilo Lodi, our brand ambassador, to talk about the, the flow profiling of, uh, of our Mina, uh, because I think Danilo and I've traveled quite a bit over the past years, and uh, there's no probably better person than Danilo to simplify a concept that seems difficult, but actually is easy, and do you understand how much that impact, uh, what kind of impact has on the, the coffee, you know, your coffee cup. So, um, yeah, um, of course, if you have uh, any questions or, you know, curiosity about markets and coffee cultures, uh, I'm here, of course, but otherwise I'll, I'll leave the floor to Danilo and then to, to Simone Pili.
And Simone, by the way, of course, he will talk about studio. And I think it's quite interesting to and it's worth exploring these two models because, you know, especially in this period where we are spending a lot of time at home, you know, one group machines, uh, both different, but uh, both, you know, very, very interesting. Uh, I think it's going to be, it's going to be cool to, to listen to them. Yeah, so I'm done from my side. Hi guys. Well, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background, I've been working with coffee for 16 years. And I've been working in all the sides of the industry as a barista, as a roaster, helping farmers. Uh, and I get very attached to machines uh, since the early beginnings because I really wanted to understand the technology and why sometimes I'll make a coffee and do everything right and doesn't taste right. So it was that, that's how I started uh, using Dalla Corte. I uh, remember there was a presentation here in Brazil in 2013 and I, I fell in love with the project. Actually, I was bombarding the, the team here in Brazil with questions like, why this, why that? And they convinced me, they proved me wrong in everything that I was against the machine at the time. And I like it so much that I bought one and I was the first one to get one uh, and bring it to Argentina, where I lived for a year and I had a coffee shop and roastery there. Uh, and after I came back to Brazil, I became uh, one of the pros for the program, uh, the Alacorte program. And nowadays I'm helping them to build the brand around the world. And uh, the thing is, I joined the company when they start the MENA project which was really, really, really cool. So, and then I, I was able to test and help them to improve everything that was around this technology. So to be a little bit uh, more uh, clear, what is the digital flow regulator does? Let's think about the flow uh, as the amount of water that comes out on the group head. So normally we, in every machine, we are already adjusting the flow of the extraction. How? When we change the grind size. As soon as we change the grind size, we are either allowing the standard flow goes faster or slower. So we are allowing the coffee to absorb more or less water, right? With the Mina, we were able to do that only changing the flow of the machine. So controlling every step in a way that, okay, that's how much, so imagine if you were able to do multiple grind size inside your porta filter. Oh, I want uh, like 50% of my, my coffee uh, to be coarse because I don't want too much acidity, but I want 50% to be uh, um, finer because I want more body. You can do that with Amina because you can adjust the flow in stages of uh, your extraction. So to start talking a little bit uh, about this, I want to share with you guys a presentation that we have with Amina and how I adjust normally and how I understand the flow after numerous tests. Uh, how can I control the flow? How can I use for different kinds of coffee? Uh, so I'm going to share my screen right now with you. Okay. There you go, share. So yes. when we are controlling uh, the, the grams per second, and I need to emphasize that the Mina has a precision that you can change half gram at a time. So I can put two grams per second, two and a half grams per second, therefore until 12 grams per second. Uh, in the early stages of the extraction is where I'm going to extract most of the flavors that are characteristic from the coffee. So I need to pay a lot of attention in this first stage of how um, hard, how gentle I'm going to be at the beginning of the extraction. And I will explain a little bit later how I do and why I apply more or less according to the coffee that I'm using. So we can regulate the acidity, the body. The body is amazing how much, because 
according to the flow, you can extract more or less uh, solubles of the coffee. And with that, I can increase or decrease the body according to the uh, solids that I have in this particular coffee. And after I set up a profile, if I like it, I just go to my app that I can use on my tablet or my cell phone and be ready to, I save them and I just can replicate it. Uh, so this, the five step uh, that I can use is to change the whole extraction and I can save it, I, I, how many grams I use it, uh, what was the temperature that I use it and how was the total volume. And since it's the digital flow regulator that it's very precise of the amount of water, grams of water that are throwing into the cake, uh, when you save the volumetrics, you're really saving the amount of water that is going through the cake. So if you don't change your coffee, if you don't change the tamping and the same amount of grind, uh, same amount of coffee in the same grind size, you will always be accurate, uh, which is amazing. This technology be so precise. So, for example, uh, when I, when we're talking about roasting coffee, we let's go to the extremes. Normally, we have a light roast, a dark roast. Sometimes we're gonna have something in the middle, uh, and normally they're from filter to espresso. In a mean, I can do both. And also the other situation that we found is, hey, I got a, a bag of coffee and it's really, really fresh. Or, oh, I got a bag of coffee over there and it's sitting in my shelf for a month. How can I extract the batter of each one of those with Amina? And that's the only machine that I found on the market that I can actually do a good extraction with coffee even if it's older or not. So what happened when the coffee is dark roast, not burn, not Napolitan style, Marco? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so present. <laughs> dark roast, not burn, okay? Normally, a dark roast coffee, how it usually tastes? Low acidity or no acidity, very short sweetness, bitter compounds, uh, people say, tend to say that it's a heavy body, uh, but I think it's more the presence of more solids than body itself. Long aftertaste normally, and very strong and powerful flavors, right? That's not how you're usually going to taste in a regular uh, machine. How a light rose, not underdeveloped, not with cereal flavors or anything, will taste. First thing that people say about a light roast is that the acidity is pungent, it's heavy and strong and it's too much. Very fruity and the sweetness is more towards the fruit side. Uh, there's a, not a lot of balance in the flavors in general because the acidity tends to be ahead of everything. People tend to say that it's a low body. Again, I think it's a, more a perception of bitterness than anything else short aftertaste and mild flavors. That's normally how people describe a light roast, right? When it's too fresh, what people say normally is like, the, the degasification, the coffee didn't have time to degas. The crema is unstable, unstable and that's, for me, is like the, that, that was like the beauty of the Mina. And nobody can ever complain about the crema after you use the Mina. And I tested with coffee that I literally waited to cool down from the roast machine and put it on the grinder. People normally say the coffee that is too fresh has underdeveloped flavors and short aftertaste. And when it's too old, 30 days or more, we have a loss of organic material. So we start feeling like a little bit of, uh, uh, we lost all the main characters, the flavor of the coffee. The crema is normally thin and opens really fast or doesn't get consistency. We have some metal oxidized flavor and a faded body and sweetness. Okay, I explain all of this and now you guys, okay, what is has to do with the Mina? Well, what it has to do with the Mina is all those problems that we have with fresh coffee, old coffee, light roasted coffee, or dark roasted coffee, we can actually make those uh, 
problems disappear and make those coffee taste better with amina. How? Well, adjusting the flow. So let's go to the stages normally that distraction happens. First, we have the blooming, let's say it. So it's when we wet the bed and span the volume, right? Uh, and we, we're gonna start the extraction. Then we, there is the ramp up that is, when you start feeling that, the machine start uh, receiving a little bit of uh, restriction and start pushing. That's what we call the ramp up. And then the extraction is when it start dropping in your cup and that's all the pressure after you fill up the chamber, the pressure start going and uh, extracting everything. And then there's all stages of distraction. You see the normally the spouts, the coffee changing from very thick to go thinner and then watery towards the end. And that's the develop of distraction. And with Amina, I can control all those stages. And I normally, how do I approach that? So if I think the coffee's too sharp, as soon as I touch, touch my mouth or it's too hot or whatever, I know that the problem is at the beginning of the extraction. If I have an aftertaste that is not pleasant, I know that I need to fix the end of the extraction. And if I have a problem with the body, I know that I need to change the middle part of the extraction, right? I normally use two to three uh, changes in the profile to help me get the right profile. But you can go up to five depending on the coffee. So I'm going to give you guys a few examples of that work 90% of the time with coffees anywhere in the world. So for example, light roast. Light roast, general rule, predominant acidity, right? Uh, so to balance this high acidity, I need to pay attention at the beginning, the early stages of the extraction, because normally it's like in that first sip, it's like kind of like a shock in your mouth. So normally this, if you guys are looking now, this is the print screen of the app on the MENA. So you see this DFR, digital flow regulator. So it's go from zero to 12. Uh, from two to 12, I can go two, two and a half, and therefore, so on. So I, and the, the time is the other line, the uh, horizontal line, it's how many seconds. That's the number that you see after any white dot, right? So for example, light rose, I need to be very gentle at the beginning so I can have time to break down those acids. So I go from two to three grams per second, very gentle, very slow, for around five to eight seconds, depending on the coffee. Then I go up. I go up to, because the middle of the extraction, the thing is, when I have a underdeveloped coffee, not underdeveloped, but very light roast coffee, I don't have a lot of uh, things to extract in the middle, which is the body part. So I go high, so I can pass this curve and extract most of the lipids, most of the uh, solids that the coffee has, and then I go lower again, because again, the acidity could leave astringency in the end, in the aftertaste. So I go around two to three grams per second from five to eight seconds. Then I go up for uh, uh, like, let's say five, six, seven grams per second for another five seconds. Then I go down again, almost to the same level that I start maybe a gram up and finish distraction like this. So I don't have a lot of green flavors, a lot of uh, uh, acids undesirable for the finish of the coffee. And this worked for most, like I try coffees from everywhere around the world, light roasted, like normally written down like uh, uh, for filter, light roasted, like Nordic style. And I try on the Mina and it works perfectly with this kind of profile. Like I start uh, working as a coffee pro in 2016, uh, early 2016, like March. And I'm testing until this day. Uh, and I'm still finding other utilities for the Mina. And I still think that there's a lot of people that don't know, like the Mina, in my opinion, if you are a roaster, 
and you want to sell coffee. In the, not in this one, but in the next slide, I'm going to talk about fresh coffee. And if you, for example, you're not going to roast your coffee, wait seven days to send it to your guy to see if it tastes good. You're going to send it, like you're going to do a cupping session, you're going to send it, but you don't know if it's good in espresso or not. With the Mina, I can replicate how the coffee is going to taste in five days. And I can also, after I, like normally, I, I save a kilo, for example, for later. If I have the same water of my customer, I can replicate the flow of the machine that he has to taste the coffee. Just for give you guys an example, when, uh, the Mina used to stay in my house. Now I, I live in a coffee shop of a friend of mine. Uh, when uh, my girlfriend, Marta, that was the champion of Brazil, we got in the semifinals in the world, was training for nationals. We knew what was the brand of the machine and what model. And I knew how many grams per second that machine will give me of water. So we were training in our house. Okay, let's go to dark roast now. So after we roast coffee, and I learned that the hard way, <laughs> When we go for a long period of time or we expose the coffee to higher temperature, normally the coffee gets uh, less dense and more soluble. Uh, so to the, what happens is when we saturating all those compounds, they get bitter in our mouth. When you're putting water, adding water, you're extracting more bitter compounds in our mouth because the coffee became more soluble like it's you can taste it it's kind of like tastes like sand uh, like there's the rough uh compounds of the coffee so normally what i do so remember that i told you that at the beginning of the extraction is when i'm going to extract 80 percent of the flavors now i do the other way around so since the bitter compounds is going to be like the biggest amount of flavors in this coffee i don't want to extract a lot of them and I want to extract all the good ones fast. So what I do, I go very high, 10 grams per second, depending on where you are in the world, it can be a little bit more, a little bit less because it depends on the altitude. So I go for three seconds with 10 grams per second, and then I go down. Why do I go down? Remember that in the middle of the extraction and at the end, Middle, I pay attention in the body, and in the end, I'm the aftertaste. So the taste I'm gonna stay with me. So in the middle, I want since the coffee has too many solubles, I want to go down because it. Even if I I was uh, does, doesn't matter the 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 method that I'm gonna use it. It will be heavy body period because of the roasting profile. So I'm going down because this high body will show up. Doesn't matter, and since by towards the end of the extraction is when you're going to extract more undesirable solids i still keep down so i don't bring those to the cup so when i go high at the beginning i extract only the good flavors and when i go down middle and end i keep the body lower so mean i'm not going to extract more body than the coffee already have and i'm not keeping uh all those undesirable solids at the end in my aftertaste now is the interesting part especially for coffee roasters now and even for uh home consumption because sometimes i got a coffee that is too fresh or too old i do like uh there's a lot of people that buy coffee from other countries so when it arrives it's too old so for that i have rules for coffees that are old and coffees that are fresh so too old for example when what happened when we are using a coffee that is too old uh we start getting faded flavors the the flavors go down everything goes down with the oxidized oxidization of coffee everything gets stale we start losing aromatics the flavors vanish Coffee is very delicate, so especially the most complex one is the first one to go away. But again, why this happened? Let's think about a bean, right? It's the outside of the bean, if it's a whole bean, it's getting oxidized. But the middle, we still have something. 
even though the cough is porosis, like not the oxygen didn't penetrate in the middle uh, to the whole thing. So when we grind, we need to be fast to go to the machine and do the extraction. And for that, what I recommend, we go a little, like we go mid range around C, five to seven grams per second. I like to go six grams per second for three seconds to, to bring everything that the coffee has inside. And then I go down again. Why? Because outside of the bean, like the, the outshell of the bean has a lot of oxidized flavor and I want to bring them to the cup. Plus, one of the first things to degradate in the coffee to go away is the carbohydrates or so the sugars that will build the body. So I'm not going to have a lot of body, period. Doesn't matter. I, I, I can do, I can improve my experience, but I'm not going to make, make a miracle out of it bring uh, uh, this coffee to uh, uh, have the body after a month of, after roast. But I can have a more smooth and round body going down. It's, so it's similar to dark roast, but I don't go too high at the beginning. Why? Because the coffee doesn't have a lot of things anymore. It's faded, period. So I go to the middle and then I go towards the end so I can have all the flavors left without leaving those metal oxidized flavors to the end and the aftertaste. That's what I do with too old. But we are talking about specialty coffee, right guys? So I don't think that a lot of people drink coffee too old. I think that's more for if you have something in your shelf, like I, normally I get a lot of coffees from championships. I put it on my freezer for since I forget and I still want to drink a good espresso. So that's the profile that I use, adjusting probably uh, the mid range a little bit to go a little higher, a little lower, depending on the coffee, depending on the acidity. And I keep from middle to end very low, so I don't extract too much of this oxidized flavor. But I think the coolest part now for me is the too fresh. Let's go to too fresh. And that's one of the most Beautiful discover I did. I start doing it with coffee with 48 hours after roasted. And then like, you know what? Maybe I can do with 24 hours. And then like, you know what? I'm going to do it 12 hours. And then it was, there was a point that I had the machine. I finish a batch, cool it down, put it to the grinder. Like, no, that's not going to work. And it did work. It worked perfectly. Like just for you guys to know, like when I, sometimes I have an Ikawa and I have very short amount of coffee to do it. So I dial in other coffee in, the, in my grinder so I don't need to set up everything. And then I put it, beautiful, it's amazing. So when we have a very fresh coffee, what is happening inside the bean? First of all, the bean is unstable. Still like is stressed from the whole roasting process, right? And uh, especially the water and the, uh, uh, the water contact inside that is very low at that point is unstable. And we have formation of CO2 inside. And that's why the coffee is degassing. If you put it in a bag with no valve, you see that it's gonna expand because it's as liters of CO2 coming out of the coffee. For example, when you do like a homebrew at home, and you do a pre-infusion, right? So you go there, grind the coffee. As soon as you do the pre-infusion, you see that bunch of bubbles coming up when the coffee is too fresh, like a bunch of bubbles. If you do a cupping session, you see like the crust is gonna go up. And then as soon as uh, you, you cut it, goes down. How am I going to control this in an espresso machine where everything is like closed and tight and locked? Well, with the flow, period. So I do a, like, I go to the lowest setting, like two grams per second. So it's, it's just dripping, water is just dripping. And I let it be there for a long time, like five, six, sometimes even 10 seconds. Okay, why do I do that? When, I, when the coffee is just dripping in a port of filter, even if it's like, Camp and high, since it's a closed environment, start wetting 
the coffee very gently and start building up. Those bubbles start breaking. So CO2, if you look like, I'm a little nerdy, but if you look the molecule of CO2, it's very easy to break that down. So if you go gently, but if you push too hard, it just go to the cup and where it stays normally in the crema. And that's why the crema goes up and down when you extract in a regular espresso machine. Just go up and down, up and down. Why? Because you're pushing too hard, not breaking, and goes to the liquid. When you go very slow, it starts breaking most of it, especially the top part of the cake. Break down, break down, break down, and then I go slightly up because, let's face it, I need, if I just go two grams, the whole extraction, it's gonna take too long to extract everything, and I'm not gonna have a, a, a lot of flavor in the cup. So I need to go slightly up, like one gram, one and a half gram up for the middle because I wanna extract when a coffee's fresh. Dude, that's the best time to have the best tactile, the best body of the coffee because that's when the oils are still intact. There's no, there, there's no oxygen screwing up all those beautiful oily uh, uh, taste mouthfeel. So that's when you go up, stretch all of them, and then go down again, like half or one gram towards the end. So I don't keep extracting too much because again, Remember I told you the coffee is still unstable? So the coffee is still unstable. I don't want it to extract any uh, like roasting defects or the, still having the, the rest of the cake. It's still gonna have a few of CO2 that I wasn't able to break because I'm gonna break probably this, the top layer. So then I go down again. So I need to go this down, up, down again. Not as low as I started, but lower than the mid part. And I bring more sugars and all the flavors that the coffee has by doing this. Guys, really, this for me, and the best part is the, the, the crema. For everybody that complains about the crema, I think we posted on Dalla Corte. I did one with, uh, uh, with Amina, with a coffee that was 12 hours roasted. I did a video and uh, we put it on Instagram. It was beautiful, perfect. And I show it in the video, the crema, because it's, it's not like very thick crema, it's normal and it's not bubbly, which is, for me, it was like, pfft. when I found this, uh, uh, Anto was there. I was uh, going to, like I travel from Brazil to Milan with a bunch of coffees in my suitcase. And then like, she picked me up at the airport, was like, I need to go to the factory now. <laughs> and I start doing this, doing this. And when the machine arrived here in Brazil, I start doing the same thing. And it got to a point that I can literally, as soon as the coffee cools down in the roaster, I put it on the machine and I can make amazing espresso. And I know if I, uh, why is it important tool for the roaster? Because I roasted today, I need to deliver tomorrow. And now I know now if there's any problem in the roasting profile. Like for me, the Mina is amazing because of that. Like you can choose your coffee, create a recipe, save in your app, you know, find the right temperature, uh, thinking about what is the roasting profile, when was roasted as well. You change the flow to adapt and extract the best thing and you can make it better. Like that's, that's for me is the, like, I don't know, like I, I'm really biased. Like that's my favorite machine in the world by far. By far is my favorite machine in the world. So the thing is, it is easy. It is easy to put it in a coffee shop, but you will need to adapt the knowledge and it will depend on you. Like for example, uh, there's a few people that they put two minas with the smart bar and uh, normally what they do, like there are a few coffee shops that serve multiple coffees in espresso, right? I think with the smart bar that is two minas, I would 
suggest maximum four coffees. Why four coffees? Because I can trust the volumetrics of the machine throughout the day. So I have two selections in one machine. So selection one, selection two, and I just press the button. So selection one is one coffee, selection two is the other coffee. And the other machine, same thing. So I have four coffees. If you guys went to host last year, I was working with the smart bar and I have two coffees from George Howell. And I have four profiles, two to each coffee. So I, I always say like one of the profiles like lower acidity and that was like the milk profile. You know, same coffee, but two profiles. But the thing is I set up everything in the morning and then I just press the buttons. So this is mild acidity, this is high acidity, press the button. The other one, there was a blend, like this is high body, this is low body, press the button, that's it. So it is easy to use in a coffee shop environment and is very user friendly as well. But you don't need to use the app all the time. You use the app at the beginning and the, uh, the early stages of the coffee shop, like when you, before you're opening, when you dial in the coffee, you use the app. And then if the coffee is not tasting good throughout the day, you go to the app to change again. But you're never gonna do the other thing, like you, you need it always to start, hey, how many grams I'm using? What is the grind size? And then you go, let me choose the temperature and fine tuning the flow. So, uh, first of all, thanks Danilo. Has been a great lesson for me as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just introducing myself. Uh, I'm uh, Simone Guidi. Uh, I'm uh, working, creating uh, uh, with Alla Corte since uh, 2013, something like this. Uh, but I, be I became uh, a coffee pro for them uh, in 2018. So just uh, two years that I'm uh, with the family officially. Uh, I'm, I run a specialty coffee brand, uh, a small roaster in Florence since 2016. And uh, so, and also I'm uh, with the project with uh, Brew at Home with a campaign. So thanks a lot guys, it's a really good project. So I'm, I'm happy to be your partner. And uh, so today I'm here uh, thanks because uh, we are here to introduce uh, the studio to you, to all of you that are connected to, with us today. And uh, what, uh, so I'm just start to introduce this, this beautiful machine with my coffee as well. And luckily I can't uh, share my coffee with you uh, for real, but uh, so I'm, I'm just trying to explain how the machine works and uh, why I love this machine. Of course, uh, the uh, Mina is uh, the superstar of Dalla Corte, but this is like a princess for me because uh, the, compared to the Mina that is, uh, as Danilo said, uh, more a lab machine that can be used also in a cafe because uh, you can uh, set the profile, the full profile and then uh, just press a button. This is more uh, like uh, an EVO2 uh, single group. So is an EVO2 single group. The EVO2 is uh, the machine, the two groups machine of Dalla Corte is like the basic line. And this is a professional machine single group. What uh, we, we did in this machine or the technician, they, they, they did in this machine, it, they started uh, from the beginning with a lower flow compared to the classic machine like the Evo 2. For example, we, so we talked with Danilo, said, uh, told, talked a lot about flow profiling. Uh, a, no, a regular machine of Dalla Corte works with uh, 10 grams per second flow rate. This is the standard with uh, Evo 2 and the, the, the old DC Pro. So this machine starts with a lower flow. The flow here is uh, set at eight grams per second. So it's already reduced. We can't change the flow. We is just a constant flow, but it's already reduced. This, the reason why is because we found that with a lower profile, uh, we get more balance in every cup and we get also, we have more complexity in all the cups, pretty much in uh, all the coffees, any style of roast and so on. So this machine, uh, why is uh, a, 
professional machine single group because the, the espresso boiler, so uh, Marco Libonati at the beginning uh, told you something about the multi-boiler technology and uh, like the independent uh, system that uh, the, this machine, but uh, all the uh, Dalla Corte machine uh, have uh, inside. So the espresso boiler that is in the front is covered, but uh, in reality is this. So contains uh, the 500 grams of 500 ml of uh, water and then in the back there's the steam boiler these two boilers are separ separate se separate and uh, independent this is uh, on uh, studio this is uh, on Evo, Evo 2 this is uh, on, on XT the same and in mean as well so the this uh, the espresso boiler is the same that uh, uh, Mina uh, has uh, inside. So it's the same one. It's the same one for all the machines. What I want to show with you is this is the boiler that is uh, half liter here, and I open up the machine just to show you inside how it works. So this is a small uh, the small uh, steam boiler that the machine has is uh, two liter. Uh, the, the, the boy is not, is not big, but just because it uh, has to fit uh, inside uh, this uh, small and uh, thin shape. This is the boiler and underneath uh, this gray part, uh, this big, is the same pump that uh, the EVO2 has. This is a professional uh, pump, it's a rotative pump that uh, is not uh, common in a machine uh, big like this. And also because uh, inside this machine can work uh, with uh, the tap water, but also with the tank, as you can see. Compared to the previous model, Mini, this uh, tank can contain uh, uh, four liters of water. So it's uh, a bit more that helps you if you need uh, this machine for events uh, or uh, going somewhere where uh, you can't connect uh, to the tap. And also, if you want to change the, the water, you can use the water bottle, the bottle from a, so, a different water just to, to have to taste, to test. And that this is what I do. Then the machine is, uh, as you see, has two le lev. One is for uh, the steam. And this is for turn on the espresso extraction. As you can see here, you can see manual, uh, selection two or selection one. So you can record to selection. Obviously is uh, the volumetrics, uh, the volumetric system, the, vol the volumetric, uh, so uh, is set by the volumetric. So you just, uh, as always, you put the underneath the cap, you just uh, select this option, I'll show you later. And then you have the volumetric system uh, uh, like all the other machines. So anyway, it's uh, super easy. Here you have here the, um, the, the, the steam boiler for the pressure. Then I show you uh, also the temperature. And here inside you have the pump. So when I turn on, you see the pump goes at nine. Someone, someone of you, I don't know if he's here, he's still here, but ask uh, regarding Mina, regarding the pressure of the Mina. So Mina, like studio, like all the other machines of Dalla Corte, work uh, with nine bar pressure. This is our standard. So we don't manage the, the pressure, we manage the flow profile. As you see here, this is a small display. So this machine has been launched uh, in, uh, two in last year, 2019 at CJEP. And uh, the new feature on this machine is uh, that in a compact machine, they introduce a, a small display where you can see the, um, the espresso, the boiler espre espresso boiler temperature that uh, I set at 92 degrees. Then uh, here, the second, you can see the time, the extraction time. And at the end, you see 7.9 is the flow rate, grams per second. So it's already reduced, as you see, because to measure the flow rate, we need uh, just uh, to turn on the pump without coffee. Because with coffee, you, you can't understand uh, which is the, the flow rate uh, of your system. 
then when uh, you put the coffee in, happens something else. Then we can talk later about that. This is the machine. I want to show you inside the menu that is, uh, this is interesting because it's a single group machine, as I told you, is a, is a professional machine that helps me when I have to do trails uh, as a roaster, but also just uh, to enjoy the coffee at home, like brew at home. So the menu is just pressing this button, uh, you go into the menu. You can turn on, so the, if you um, press, is enter. So you can turn on or off the boiler. As I told you, it's independent. So I can turn off and on. Uh, depends if, if I need, I want uh, to make a cappuccino or not, just espresso. Usually I use off because I prefer uh, make espresso, but this is a personal opinion. Anyway, just I turn on now. Then going, uh, can you see? Uh, this is the, te the, um, the temperature of the steam boiler. I go in, I can change it, as you see, and I say I choose 123 degrees just be, because this temperature gives me this pressure here. It's uh, around 1.25, something like this, that is, uh, my opinion, is uh, perfect for how I like to form the milk. But this uh, then depends, uh, so it's uh, also a personal opinion. Then I select OK, I go ahead, just going on the right or on the left if I want to go back. This is to enable the espresso boiler on or off. If I turn off, I can just form the milk, for example, because the system is independent. So I turn on, then the temperature here, I select the 92, I can change it. Then this is to set up the doses, so I just set, uh, select and I can change with the lever, I can select. The machine tell me, go down with the lever, if I want to select uh, the number two, I go on the number two. When I stop, the machine record the quantity of the water uh, that I use. The next uh, extraction will be uh, on uh, the, the, the quantity that I select right now. I can do it for the, the two, two selection two and the selection one. This is the, uh, a, new, a new feature that uh, they introduced with uh, the last uh, version of the software. That is the flashing, so the, the washing. That is really good because uh, uh, as all the new machines, uh, you can uh, just uh, select the washing uh, program and just uh, pressing, just turn up, just using the lab. So it started and also the good thing is uh, you can just stop lights as you see there are lights underneath one and two that uh, depends you can like the lights or not but uh, are good and also to see better the crema of the espresso and how the extraction uh, is going so and that but also if you don't like it you can turn off so this machine is built, it's called the studio, as we already said, and in my opinion the name uh, works because you can use this machine for uh, uh, a cafe where, where you have a low workflow, uh, you can use it uh, at home, you can use it uh, in your uh, uh, roastery, you can use uh, wherever you like because this fits uh, uh, a professional machine, single group, uh, is uh, super uh, small and uh, it's really efficient with all the, the technology of the Lacorte. The good thing is uh, you can program the auto um, off as is written here. That's I put uh, 45 minutes. So if in 45 minutes I didn't use the machine, uh, it turns down uh, by itself. The side here, the time when the machine turn, turns on by itself in the morning or in the end turns off automatically in the night. So this